All right, hello, 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 and welcome to day one of our beautiful, beautiful little course, The Truth About Sex and Power. It's gonna be fun. So I will give it a moment and let you guys hop on, since I know it can take a second for everybody to be alerted. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Say hello as you are hopping on. Tell me where you're from, how life is going, if this is your first time seeing me. Hello, Charlie. I know it's not your first time seeing me. <laughs> but say hello, hello, hello. We're gonna have some fun, you guys. Moombi, Moon, Moombi, I know how to say your name. I'm gonna, did I say it wrong? Uh, you guys, I gotta like, I gotta learn how to say all these names from, that I'm not used to. Mumbai, Moombi, if I said it wrong, I apologize. I still love you, the same. All right, well, hello. Welcome, welcome to my personal Facebook page. I am happy to welcome you here. I have not done a course or anything like that on the personal on my personal page in a while we've been doing them in zoom which is really fun and intimate but you guys can't share them or tag people and a lot of people have been like oh my god hi jelly <laughs> hello party people a lot of people have been saying like oh i wanted to like share this like how do i share this you know and it makes it a little bit more difficult and so we decided to do this little fun on here so that if you did want to tag somebody you can if you do want to share this you can because a lot of what i've been talking about lately is really important and it's important for so many of us to start coming back to our power and that's really kind of what our truth series is about you know i did the truth about money a week or a couple weeks ago and now we're doing the truth about sex and power. And it's really time for more of us to really understand our power. And especially for me, women, right? And so this, this live is gonna, gonna be talking a lot about sex and power and how it relates to us as women in this world. As powerful, unique women, because we're the powerfulest of all. But we've been kept from that. We've been kept from that and we've been systematically told we're not. And we're gonna kind of break that down and talk about how that relates to sex. And it's gonna be different than what a lot of people think. I think a lot of people when they come into something where you're talking about sex, like this isn't gonna be one of those like pussy magic lives or anything like that. We're not manifesting with our genitalia, nothing like that. It's going to be a little bit more it's gonna talk about energy, but it's gonna be a little bit more scientific based on how we actually are created as, as humans. And so if you're new to my world and you're new to me, um, my name is Sarah Longoria, obviously you're on my personal page, um, but you know, my background is in biomedical science and neurophysiology, also in energy medicine, all sorts of fun stuff. I have created my own method that really helps people come back to them themselves to really remove all of the crap that keeps us, all the programming and conditioning and deep-seated DNA coding that keeps us from really being us, right? And so a lot of my work is energetic, but a lot of it's really, really based in science and how our body is actually working and a lot of the new research that we have done and we have seen that is really revealing to how we need to start living our lives and doing things a little bit differently so that we can really live the lives we want. And I'm sure a lot of you, especially women, feel that. Feel that gap, that pull in a sense of, I want my life to look like this, but like, it's not happening for me. Or there's these other things that, that kind of prevent me from stepping up and stepping out. And then I get that, like that as, as someone who's a business owner, but also a wife and a mother and, and has these labels, right? That society puts on me. It's often this, 
this push-pull relationship that we get into as women of really being our fully expressed, full person that we're meant to be, but also fitting into the societal standards that say like, we have to be this, 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 and this. And so we're really going to break that down and we're going to have a lot of aha moments and really help you understand how sex and power are very related and what you can start doing to really open yourself up to it because like we need to. And, and as women, you know, there is so much trauma that we hold. And I know sometimes that word scares people. Like they think like, oh my God, trauma, trauma. But I want you to understand that there is. And not just from you, but from your ancestors. Women, we've been, we've been shit on for a long time. I mean, God, we've barely, we, have, we haven't even been able to have our own bank accounts for barely 50 years. We were property before that. We're literally the last. Have you guys ever thought about that? As women, we are always the last. Last ones to vote. Last ones to no longer be property. Last ones to have a bank account. Last ones to be able to do all sorts of stuff. And so then you wonder why in our lives, as women, we tend to put ourselves last. How many of you, how many of you right now listening to this, put yourself last? How many of you put yourselves last? How many of you, everything goes before you? Yes, still, last to, last to learn to read, last to go to university, last for them to ever, did you guys know that they did not even start doing clinical trials on women until the mid 80s. They were giving us drugs, all sorts of stuff, doing things to us all along. Never did an actual clinical trial to see if maybe our body that is entirely biologically different than men might react different. They had drugs that were just for women and had never ever been tested on a woman. Last to eat, last to sleep, last to do the things that you want to do. We are habitually putting ourselves last. And then we're wondering why as women, we feel dissatisfied, we feel disconnected, we feel grouchy, we wonder why half of women are on antidepressants, have all sorts of autoimmune diseases. Have you ever looked at that man? You don't often hear about men talking about autoimmune diseases. But you hear a lot of women talking about them. Something ridiculous. I think it's like over 50% now of women in um, westernized countries have an autoimmune disorder of some sort. And then Anita, you bring up a great point. Now I have the opportunity to do what I want to do and I have no idea what I want to do because we're often kept from ourselves. We're kept from ourselves intentionally, systematically. Why? Because we're powerful. We're super duper, duper powerful. But you wouldn't know it because we're kept down and we're systematically traumatized. And that trauma lives in us. And that trauma is often kind of not that big a deal. We suffer in silence, us women. We suffer in silence. How many of you have had things happen to you that you've really never talked about? Lost babies, miscarriages, rape, molestation, that guy who whistles at you, that guy who gives you that creepy freaking look. Do you yell about it? Do you scream about it? No, 
You take it. You take it. Because it's been normalized. The systematic trauma towards women has been normalized. How about this? Have you ever seen a rape case that's gone to trial? They basically make it the woman's fault. Well, if she wouldn't have worn that. She wouldn't have worn that. Well, that wouldn't have happened. I'm sorry, but no matter what a person wears, that should never happen to them. Period. You know, I was watching a show the other day and the woman was having a reaction to something and they asked her, have you ever been sexually assaulted? She said, no. And they were like, not, not at all? And she was like, well, I mean, like, I've been groped when I didn't want to be. I've been, like, touched when I hadn't want to be. I mean, I've been kissed when, like, I didn't want to be. Like, you know, but I mean, like, it's not like I've been, like, raped. Yeah, I remember them holding a woman's thong in court as evidence that it was her fault. And so this woman on the show was basically saying like, well, no, I haven't had any sexual trauma, any sexual assault to me. Because she didn't have any of the big things that had happened to her. Yeah, I once had a random guy motorboat me in the bar and slap him. And he said to me, when you wear a dress like that, you're wanting that attention. Are you though? Or are you just a powerful ass woman feeling sexy and you want to relish in your body? But I guarantee you, there are people right now on this live, there are those of us thinking, I don't know though. Like, if we are wearing low cut stuff, you are also pregnant, love it. If we are low, wearing low coats, cut stuff, are we asking for it? Maybe we are, I don't know. Those thoughts go in our head. Those thoughts are consistently put there because it keeps us questioning ourselves. It keeps us out of our power. It keeps us not getting what we want and being who we are meant to be. Yeah, look at this. I've had my nan tell me not to cry to her when I get raped because it'll be my fault for wearing that. This is another woman telling this to a woman. No one would ever say that to a man. Now, I do realize that it happens to men. Trauma, molestation, all, rape, all sorts of stuff does happen to men. It's not a one-way street, for sure. But when you look at our world, there's still a pretty big gap. We are taught as women that our bodies are not ours. Our bodies are not ours. Our bodies are not ours. They're for others. They're for that dude that wants to motorboat your boob, boobs. They're for that person over there to look at and relish in. They're for the government to decide what happens. And whether or not you guys are pro-choice or pro-life, the reason there's such an uproar over a lot of the laws that are happening around abortion is because it's not about abortion. Abortions could be eliminated. We have the technology, the ability, we have all sorts of stuff to be able to stop this ridiculousness. But what these laws are saying very clearly is your body is not your own. It does not belong to you. And this is an age old systematic trauma that is literally banged into our brains, into our DNA, into our bodies so that we question stuff. So that we are constantly questioning everything about ourselves, our power. And if we are a confused person, we never get, we never get what we want. We never actually get into our power. We're easily manipulated. And then we feel stuck and icky. And truly when it comes down to that, 
I'll be honest, you guys, I'm pro-choice and I'm pro-life. I'm both. I think we need to figure out how to eliminate abortion, but I also think that my body's my body. Their body's their body. We don't know. But that's not what we're told as women. We're told our bodies belong to someone else. We're told it in religion. We're told it in government. We're told it in society. We're told it as children. How many times in your life have you had to hug somebody as a kid that you didn't want to hug? How many times did you get tickled when you didn't want to be tickled? How many times when you were little did something happen to your body that you didn't want to happen to your body and you had no choice? It happens a whole lot more to girls than it does to boys. And we're going to talk about this. We're going to, we're going to go back to childhood in a second and really talk about where this problem starts. Because it really is a biological energetic thing that happens that keeps us stuck and keeps us from ourselves. So let's have a quick history lesson. Let's just take, let's just, let's just, just, let's just go back a little bit in history. Because I want you guys to really, really see the power of women. We live, we often forget history and we often don't go back far enough to see how it used to work. But if you go far enough back, like ladies were in charge in a lot of places. I mean, let's even go back. Let's even talk about people that names that might be known, the Cleopatras of the of the past when a woman is in her power there's just something there's there's a divine essence we the world forgets you guys that we create life i want you to really hear me say that we create life a man doesn't Man donates a microscopic part of the life-giving process. And actually, science-wise, is all of this genetic stuff has come to light and we've been able to start seeing different genetic things and all sorts of coolness and tracing genes and seeing it. What they have found is that they actually think women Genetic female existed for about a couple hundred thousand years before a genetic male did. And they found this in a lot of other species. As a species evolves, I mean, religion teaches us that we come from a man. The man's rib was pulled out and we were made. And other religions have other things, right? They, they, they program this idea that men came first and that we are a byproduct, a part of a subservient being to a man. And those are great stories. Those are great stories. But at the end of the day, they are stories. Stories written by men for this world. The facts, the research, the actual proof and data that exists shows a completely different story. It shows that in fact, in most species, including human, as we evolve, the female always comes first. And somehow the female seems to actually reproduce and create more of herself all on her own. Well, damn. That's not fascinating. I don't know what is. What? Women existed before men? And when you look, if you ever take a beautiful embryology class, which is a cool class. It shows you how the whole baby grows and everything like this. Every human actually is a woman, is a woman before it genetically and physically 
becomes a man. And what we really don't like to talk about, we really don't like to talk about this, is that there's also 10% of humans that are born somewhere in between. Some, both, man and woman. Some, part man, part woman. Some, more woman, little bit man. There's a spectrum. But we don't like to talk about that. Because that just is confusing, and it goes against all the, the, the religious doctrine and the societal doctrine and the programming that keeps us in our boxes. And when we're kept in our boxes, we're kept from our power. And when we're kept from our power, we're kept from our money, we're kept from um, love, we're kept from material possessions, we're kept from our energy force, our ability to live our lives, we're kept from our passion, we're kept from all of it. And so when you look around at this world and you even think about yourself and you think about how we look at this world and we often just feel blah about it, right? So many people are just in the mundane, going through the things, feeling stuck, feeling kind of mad. I mean, what is it? Like 40, 30, 50% of the people are on antidepressants or anti-anxiety medicines. We don't have anxiety. We're not depressed. We've been stripped of our power. We've been stripped of our passion. We've been stripped of our life force. That's what's happened. You can medicate us all you want. It doesn't change it. Maybe for a short period of time. We have been stripped of our essence, of our desire to be human and to experience this world. When you're not in your power, everything feels off. And your body tells you. Your body tells you, you guys, hello, autoimmune disease. Hello, headaches. Hello, reproductive issues. Hello, all sorts of things. Your body is knocking on the door saying something is not right. You are believing things that are not for you to believe. They're hurting you. They're keeping you from you. They're keeping you from your power. Charlie, hello, sore throat right now. They're keeping you from your voice. They're keeping you from your passion. They're keeping you from your purpose. And, and here's the deal, guys. Like, I know firsthand. I know. I was there. I've been there. I've been out of my power. I've been the person just trying to play by the rules. I've been the person stuck up with sexual trauma, just saying, not today, not dealing with it. Just going through the motions, getting the things done, expecting happiness, expecting love, expecting my passion to somehow show up, but like never showing up. Wondering why it's so hard, why life just doesn't feel good. Wondering why money is so hard to make. Wondering why men can just like decide they want to make more money and it just boop, comes to them. And I guess, and I get not all men. But when you look at this world, it's still a man's world out there, ladies and gentlemen. It is a man's world. It doesn't have to be. So we go back to the Cleopatras. We go back to earlier times. And women were powerful, you guys. I mean, I want you to really think, think about the Cleopatra, Helena Troy type energy. Literal armies fought for these women because they were in love with them. When a woman is in her power, when a woman knows who she is and what she wants, we are the most magnetic, powerful, irresistible, insanely capable thing that exists. And men know it. When Christopher Columbus, there is a, um, one of his people, like wrote a journal documenting when they went over to, I don't know, one of the Caribbean, wherever he landed. And when he got there, the community was actually, um, it's kind of like in the Bahama area, was actually um, a culture run by women. So it was actually really interesting. These women lived all together. 
They raised the children. They did all the things. And they were just bringing the men to procreate. That was it. And the men would go off and they'd do their things. They'd bring them food. They'd do different things. Like these men just like worshipped these women. And you actually saw this kind of all over in native native and indigenous type cultures that women were reserved as these as these amazing creatures because i don't know if you've noticed again we create life do you realize that you guys i mean do you really realize that you create life like you make a human in a womb, a human being, you create life. That's pretty powerful shit. But there's also the lovely, we won't go all into this, the systematic trauma of telling you that when you can't have a baby, there's something wrong with you. All sorts of stuff, right? So even if you can't create life, you've still got that power, friend. We actually all have it, women and men. We all have it, but we've lost it. We've been kept from it. It's why it's gotten so hard here. It's why we have to work so hard. It's why we have to struggle so much. It's because we forgot our magic. We have completely and utterly and totally forgotten our magic, both men and women. We've lost it. And truly, I believe women actually hold the essence of the magic. I mean, we create the life. And so if we're creating life and we've forgotten our magic, we're not passing the magic along to men or women. We've forgotten it. It's gone. And I know so many of you, and I know so many people in the world, they want it to be easier. Every woman that tells me she had a black thumb, I remind her of her nature to create. You were born to create. Men plant seeds. We create the life. But we all, as every human, we have a magic in us. But women seem to have a different type of magic, a more magnetic. Yes, Lisa, and what about when society tells us it's wrong when we don't want to have kids? I mean, I don't know if you guys know this, but raising kids, bur carrying babies, birthing babies, feeding babies, raising children is a lot of work. And for most of us, it's not, it doesn't end up being 50%. It doesn't end up being 50%, the man, woman sharing the stuff. It's possible. I've come pretty darn close to managing it in my life that way. But I also have a husband that does the work I teach and steps up and, 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 and lets me challenge him and grows with me. And it's hard sometimes, you guys. It's hard. We have some hard moments where he's bumping up against those societal norms and I'm saying no. And most of us women, we don't do that. We don't stand up for ourselves. We don't challenge these societal norms. We don't say, why am I always the one that does this, 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 and this? We just take it. We just take it. And we put ourselves last and we wonder why we're just me. So Christopher Columbus got to this little island and he saw these women were like bad ass women. They were running things. They were powerful. And this guy in his journal literally writes and talks about how Christopher Columbus was basically like, we need to do something about this. The women that we have back at home cannot know this exists. We have spun a web of making them know that like religiously and systematically women are less than. If they saw this, they might start to believe that that isn't true. So they pretty much killed them. Pretty much went in and just like wiped out these islands. We did the same thing when we in America with all the indigenous cultures. Don't let our ladies know. We did it systematically through every country, colonization. Don't let our ladies know how all of these societies live. They might remember. They might remember that they actually are pretty damn powerful. 
that they actually could likely run circles around us. Yeah, Charlie, once upon a time, white people did do this. Once upon a time, this is all how we lived. Somewhere along the line, someone decided, keep the women down. Just like somewhere along the line, someone decided with Christianity that they actually didn't like what Jesus was saying. So they completely changed it and then produced Christianity which actually isn't really based off of the teachings of Jesus. It's actually based off what the Roman Empire needed to feed the people so that they would stay oppressed and marginalized and under their rule. We've been lied to, you guys, in so many freaking capacities, and so many of y'all still keep believing it. Still keep believing it. Because I get it. It's hard. It's hard to look at some of this stuff and be like, oh shit. What? I actually believed in this? I actually like really believed in this? And it was never true? It's hard. It's hard. And our world doesn't want to do it. Our world doesn't want to look it straight in the eyes and be like, shit, we were wrong. There's a lot of it out there that's just damn wrong, you guys. It's not right. It's manipulated. It's been skewed to serve the patriarch, the rich dudes, the men that want to keep power and don't believe in a world where we can all have our power and we can all thrive and we can all have a beautiful life together. Personally, I believe that's kind of the energy of the woman. We bring that, but we've been kept down. And so if you take it back to, let's take it back a little bit. Let's take it back to when we're born. So when we're born, not only are we developing physically, but we're also developing energetically. Right? Think of your emotions, for example. You don't see your emotions. You don't see your emotions. Just like you don't see your energy. But you can. They literally have technology now that can literally take pictures of auras and your chakras and all sorts of stuff. So it's not woo-woo, hoo-hoo. But around the age of two... The part of your brain that's developing is the part of your brain that says, I get what I want. I am powerful. I am strong. It also develops energetically in kind of your pelvic region. For those of you that are familiar with energy, it's called your second chakra. It's right there if you're a woman around your womb. This is also when your sexual energy starts to happen, both physically, brain-wise, energetically, and emotionally. So here you are, this little two-year-old, and ever heard, you know, people say like the terrible twos. It's like, oh my God, my kid was like so, it usually happens from anywhere from two to four, sometimes a little later, five, it can happen for girls. And often it's like you had this sweet little baby, and now all of a sudden, this child just is like, give me what I want. Don't talk to me. Don't do that. I get this. Mine, mine, I can do it. We all of a sudden, all of a sudden we have this life force energy, this passion, this fire that starts to come into us. This is it. This is this is human. This is our life force energy. This is our passion. And a lot of it is me. Simmer down. Don't do that. Don't talk to me like that. Don't act like that. Why do you want everything? Stop wanting everything. Right? And it's often a little bit different in how you treat boys and girls at this point. Girls, we want to be sweet and nice-natured. 
boys we give a whole lot more leeway to. Uh, wild. Boys will be boys. And I've even seen myself have moments of judgments when you meet those friends that just have wild girls. You know, just wild things, like wild girls. And you have those judgments where you're like, oh my God, like, pull that chick together. Like, brush her hair. Right? Then I think to myself, no, mama, let her be. Let her be wild. Let her live that energy. We're never fully able to, to integrate and live that energy. This is an integration phase that we're going through. And is it sometimes hard being a parent when you have a kid who's all over the place doing this? Yeah. And is it even harder because we weren't allowed to do that as children? So now we have a bunch of emotions and crap stuck in our stuff around this? Sure does. But what happens is, is we start storing and stifling that energy in this area. And although our sex energy is not necessarily the energy of like, oh, here, come on, like, come have sex with me energy, but it's the same energy and it works the same as that life force passion energy. It's one and the same. It's here. It's here. So as you squish down your sexual energy, so let's say as a girl, I mean, let's, 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 let's be real. A guy in college goes out and sleeps with three girls in a week and he's a damn conqueror. Damn! Guys are high-fiving him. Girls don't really care. They just kind of expect it from dudes. A girl goes out and does that and she's dirty. She's a slut. She doesn't have good morals. There's something wrong with her. She shouldn't have a sex drive like that. What? Why does it get to be different? Why can a dude go sleep with a hundred girls by the time he gets married and that's considered like good work? And if a girl does it, it's considered like the most disgusting thing. Until you're married, Melissa. And then bring the freak in the bedroom out, baby. Stifle that sexual energy. Don't go have sex with dudes. Don't please yourself. But once you're married, you let that little slut loose. But by then, most women are like, ah. stuck that sexual energy down so hard. You know, it's really interesting, guys. We... Every year we do um, HEAL, which is one of our most iconic programs. We're actually gonna be doing a HEAL retreat this year. So if you are in our membership, get ready because we're gonna actually be doing a weekend long one of really working to heal all of this stuff around sex and money and power so that we can start having the lives we meant to ha are meant to have. So get ready membership. Oh, I'm going to talk about it more tomorrow for those of you that aren't in our membership if you want to buy it separately or come join our membership. But it's going to be like the curriculum I'm just writing out for it. Whew! It is going to be... Mm, mm, I can't wait. I can't wait. But anyways, when we do this heal every year, and usually it's a little five-day course that we do, we go into a lot of deep stuff. We really, really pull out all the crap that's been in there around sexual trauma, the, the big T, the little T, right? The people who whistle at us and the people who like really hurt us. And it's amazing to me how many women come to me afterwards, women who've never had an orgasm in their life before and say things like, I've never had an orgasm in my life before and I just had the first one. Or I've never felt confident in my body before. I just felt confident. I've never been attracted, like want, wanted to have sex. And now all of a sudden, like I do. Sex is a part of our lives, you guys. It's part of the pleasure of being human. And we've been programmed as women for centuries and centuries and centuries and told that it's pleasurable and okay for men, but it's not for women. It's not for women. You're here to procreate. You're here to procreate. And often when you get married, and this happened to me, 
I remember after I had my first, after I had my kids and, and decided I wasn't going to have any kids anymore. It was like my sex drive went boom. It was like gone. And I'm a very sexual person. I have always loved having sex, but I have noticed like when I got married, it kind of changed. It was like all of a sudden things changed. When I got done having kids, all of a sudden it was like gone. It was like my body said to me, you've made the babies. Why would you have sex now? You had sex before to find a man to procreate with. You found the man, you procreated, now you're done. Now, interestingly enough, that doesn't happen to men. They haven't been programmed for centuries and centuries and generations and generations and hundreds of thousands of years to be told that the only purpose of sex for them is procreation. They've been told the actual purpose of sex for them is actual, actually pleasure with a procreation moment. Like, make sure you also procreate. But actually, sex for you is actually for pleasure. But that's not what women have been told. We've been told sex for us is procreation. It's procreation. And we've been told it over and over and over and over again. Why? Because when women are in their sexual energy, when they do not have sexual trauma, when we are locked in to feeling lit up by life, when we are feeling sexy, when we are feeling totally turned on, and I don't mean turned on by a man or a woman, I mean turned on by life. We are so freaking powerful. There is literally no stopping us. There is literally no stopping us. It's a big part of our energy. Our sexual energy and our pleasure energy is like our woman energy. See, I love it, Wendy. I've shared this before, but seriously, sex is really great between me and my husband now. Haven't done anything else but the foundation. That's our, our like flagship course and our membership. It changes everything, you guys. It changes everything when we are locked in to that energy. And I look at so many women and I look at so many issues that we have in this area. Infertility, endometriosis, back pain, hip pain. So many issues that go on right here. It's our stifled sexual energy. We don't feel comfortable stepping out, walking out, and our just sexiness and being like, yes, hello world, it's me. Mm, I'm here and I'm ready. I'm ready for pleasure. I'm ready for all of it. And you know what that also just hooks into? Your money, friends, your money. You want to make money easier? You want money to come to you easier? It's hooked right in there. If you're not feeling comfortable with you, if you're not feeling comfortable in your power, it makes it real hard to welcome in money. Because money's right there. It's in that pleasure, that turned on by life, that supportive, get what I want, do what I want kind of energy. And so you look at the world and you wonder, gee, gee, I wonder why women have such a hard damn time making money. We do. I can't tell you the, the dudes I watch launch businesses that honestly half of them have no freaking business even launching a business. Successful makes money like that. Because guys... They believe they get to have what they want. They believe life is here for them. They believe they get to live in pleasure. They get to live in all the good. And we're over here thinking we come last. Well, we better support everybody. We better support everybody. We're the supporters. Are we though? Are we though? Or have we just been told we are? Have we just been systematically told we are? Because, you know, there also was a time in history where we told black people that they were slaves. We accepted that. But were they? Were they actually? No. They were human beings. They were freaking human beings that deserved everything that this, everybody else got. 
We just made up rules. Not us, not them, but the people in power. Because it worked for them. And now they are so scared, so scared, that we're going to figure this out. They're coming after us in all sorts of ways. You look overseas, in different countries. Take a look at Iran over there. Oh, let's just make sure we wrap our women back up. Wrap those women back up. Make sure they know that their bodies are not theirs. They're only for their husbands. Look over here. I live in Texas. You can see all of our politics happening. And I'm like, okay, all right, all right. I see what you're saying. You look at all sorts of countries throughout the world and you can see. You can see what the world is saying right now. The world is saying, sit down and shut up, girls. Sit down and shut up. You don't have any power here. We own you. We're in charge of you. We decide for you. Shut up. But I don't want to shut up. And I hope you don't want to shut up either. But the key to us feeling comfortable in this is working through the systematic trauma that lives in our second chakra. Not to mention the other sexual trauma that happens. You guys, when people make you feel uncomfortable, when people motorboat you at a bar without your consent, that slowly makes you start to hide. Not just physically, but all around. You all of a sudden start to hide the vibrant you because it attracts unwanted attention. It attracts unwanted actions that you don't want. And you often just know they're going to happen. Just like Charlie's grandmother said to her, don't come crying to me when you get assaulted because you're wearing that. When it shouldn't be that way. We should be able to express ourselves and be ourselves and be respected. If somebody wants to come up to us and say, hey, your boobs look amazing in that dress. Can I motorboat them? You can decide to consent or not. Sure. I wore this dress exactly for that reason. Motorboat away, my friend. Or, no nah, man, I don't wear this dress for you. Because you know what, guys? Sometimes people may wear a dress because they do want that kind of attention. And that's okay, too. But just because somebody looks a certain way, acts a certain way, dresses a certain way, is a certain way, does not give complete and total permission that that's what they're doing. That that's what they're doing. But that's the culture. The worldwide culture is, if you dress like that, you're asking for it, or just go to the Middle East and freaking cover your body up. Just be covered. Just be eyes. Or sometimes not even eyes. You get real things, they have the shields over their eyes. So they're literally covered. Can't even see them. What the fuck is that? What the fuck is that? You'd be completely covered from head to toe? Nobody gets to see you? Except for your husband? I mean... Come on, let's start questioning some of these things. But most importantly, let's start working through some of these things. Because women should not be last anymore. You know, the world tells us we're first. Ladies first. It's like some kind of sick joke, right? Ladies first. If you're going through a door. Ladies first. If you're eating dinner. But everywhere else, ladies last. 
<laughs> it's like some kind of sick joke. Like they make it seem like, oh, they're putting, they're taking care of us. They're putting us up on this pedestal, right? That's like kind of this whole masculine, feminine, polarity kind of stuff that goes on. It's this, we're putting you up on this pedestal. We're taking care of you. We're supporting you. But are you? Are you really? Are you actually keeping me down? You're actually not supporting me. Am I actually supporting you? Am I actually the one who's like the magic behind all of your stuff? Am I actually not being able to fully live my life? Because I've just been programmed to believe that I'm last, I'm lower, I'm less than. And do I also carry around a bunch of silent sexual trauma that keeps me whoop? Because I know there's women on this live who have serious trauma that they've never spoke about, they've never talked about, they've never thought about, but it lives there and it shows up and it affects you and how you show up. But you don't talk about it because it's not something we talk about. And you don't heal it because we're taught you can't heal from it, but you can. We're last, we suffer in silence, and it's not okay. It's not okay. We can say all we want that the world has changed drastically. And sure, we're no longer property. Winning. We can vote. Winning. We can be educated. Well, I should say in America and Canada and some of these other countries. Because some of these other countries, nah. They're still property. They can't vote. All of that. And I often, yeah, we're taught to forget about the trauma. It's almost like you guys... It's so ingrained in our culture that it's almost like it happens. I mean, really, like that's almost what I feel like. It is so prevalent in all worldwide cultures that it's almost just like it happens. Like, just deal with it. No, 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 no. We need to process it. We need to feel it so that we can evolve past it. Because if we continue to hold on to it, it keeps us down. It keeps us hiding. It keeps us small. It keeps us from resources like power and money and opportunities. And if we don't have money, we can never do what we want to do in this world. I don't know if you guys know this, but money is kind of important. It's kind of important. You know, it's funny when I look at... When you look at marriage and people say like, oh, the family unit is falling apart. And I'm like, mm, is the family unit actually falling apart? Or did marriage, was marriage really constructed when women were property? So marriage was constructed basically because you had these girls that needed to leave their dad and needed to be owned by somebody else. And so they basically went to the man that then owned them. Well, as we've evolved and now women, and you can look at the correlation, as women got access to bank accounts, the divorce rate went up, woof, immediately. And as women have gained more power, more access to financial resources, more equality in this world, you've just watched the divorce rate go up. And so it begs the question, it begs the question, is the family unit falling apart or, or, are women just stepping into their power and realizing that they don't need to be trapped into marriage? The research on this, you guys, is fascinating. It's absolutely fascinating. Like they've done so much research on like post-divorce and seen that men have a really hard time post-divorce. Like it's like statistically they want to get like married again because what they find is men benefit even in this day and age way more from a marriage than women do. And when they follow women, they find that women are actually like, they feel better and free and like, huh, often with divorce. And it's often a lot harder for them, but they still feel better about it. And so it's really interesting because marriage was really con constructed in a way actually to keep women oppressed. 
You had to have a man. It was barely 50 years ago, you guys, 60, 70 years ago, the 50s. We're like, if you didn't have a husband or a dad, like, it was really hard for you to be an independent single woman. You couldn't even get a, your own bank account without a man signing on it. Even in this day and age, you guys, I posted about this in my in the in Facebook. I literally, when I went to get a credit line for this business, this profitable working business, the question the man asked me over and over again was, how involved is your husband? Does your husband oversee this? Does your husband do this? And I was and I asked him, why do you keep asking me about my husband? My husband has nothing to do with this business. And he said, oh, well, you're a community property state. And I said, that has nothing to do with how involved my husband is. The only part about the community property state is, is that he has to know I'm doing this and you're going to need his financials, which I already gave to you. Yes, as someone who worked in healthcare, men are the ones who mostly die alone. And so really, it's time for us to start questioning what's going on here. Is how our world running and what we're doing actually benefiting all of us? Or is it benefiting a very few? And I think we know the answer to that. You never get those questions in the UK, thankfully. Yeah, and you know the UK? A little more progressive. There's, part, there's pockets of the world that, is, that are doing better at this than other parts. And they should be our examples. But still, no matter what, you guys, as women, we harbor so much sexual trauma in our bodies. Not just from you, but from our ancestors. So much of it. And it blocks our power in such a big way. And it's time for us to start looking at it, feeling it, and releasing it from our bodies. Because if we don't release it from our bodies, it runs the show. You might want to try to change your mindset. You might try to... Do the thing that you keep saying you're going to do, but you're not going to be able to keep it up. How often do you try to do that? Where you're like, okay, I'm changing my life today. I'm going to do this thing. And you only end up doing it for like a week or two. And then you revert back. It's running the show. Your trauma is running the show when you need to be running the show. When you need to be running the show. And we're going to talk more about that tomorrow when we get into power. And I believe we're doing that in our Hey You Human community. Right, Melissa? I think you're still on here. But I'm pretty sure we're doing it in our Facebook group, Hey You Human community. So come on over there. It's a, a lot of you are already members. But come on over to the Hey You Human community. It just makes it easier because then you guys can post in there. We like it because it's like it kind of creates a little bit of community. And sometimes when we talk about trauma and all of these things, like you guys want to share. You want to say like, this happened to me. And this gives you kind of this safe space to start sharing for us to really communicate and collaborate. I know the Landside Meditation is good in our HEAL program. And then I'll also talk tomorrow about our HEAL retreat that we're opening. We're opening up all our HEAL stuff in our membership. We're doing a retreat. That's going to be really, really, really powerful and amazing. Good, good stuff. But it's time, you guys. The rise of the woman is overdue, y'all. It is overdue. It is time for you guys to know your power, to be able to express yourself, to be able to create wealth for yourself. It's time. It's time. Oh, and I love seeing so many faces that I haven't seen in a while. All right, you guys, I will see you tomorrow over in the Hey You Human community. If you're not part of it, just go request access and we'll let you in. Hey You with a U like that. Hey You Human. And we'll see you guys over there. We're going to get even, even deeper, even better tomorrow. All right, you guys, I love you. Have a beautiful, beautiful rest of your day, and I will see you tomorrow.